How do I come up with my own ideas? How do I differentiate myself from every other artist? How do I develop my own artistic style? How does any artist come up with their own style? These are questions that every artist has inevitably struggled with. What is my unique selling point? What's the difference between you and me and every artist in this world? What is my style? That's what we're gonna try and figure out today. My name is Seb, I'm a photographer, filmmaker, and illustrator. Welcome back to the channel. Fundamentally, this is a deeper question that transcends your work. After all, your work should be an extension of yourself. So now I ask, how did you decide your outfit today? How did you decide what movies you like? Or food? Or the way your room looks? It's honestly quite simple. You see it, you like it, you sample it. <sighs> Take your fashion sense, for example. You've been watching all these TikToks and reels of well-dressed, cool-looking people. And you see this one person wear this outfit. And you go, I need to get a biker jacket. And you scour and you hunt and you look. You finally get that awesome fit. And you look in the mirror. And you go, huh, this jacket actually looks pretty good. But maybe we have a different pair of jeans. Now why don't I try changing the shoes? You experiment until you find the one where you go, yo, this is a bit of me. It's exactly the same with your art. It's shaped by your taste, what you think looks good, and what appeals to you. You're looking at someone's photo and you go, wow, these colors look incredible. Maybe I should use these colors next time. You're looking at someone's painting and you go, wow, the composition is insane. Maybe I can try implementing that in my next one. But now comes that crucial question. Is that stealing? The line can be blurry sometimes. I'll admit to that. A lot of people say inspired by, homage, reference. But here's the thing. There is a distinct difference between copying and stealing. Let me explain. You might be familiar with the quote by painter Pablo Picasso saying, lesser artists borrow, great artists steal. Or you read the book by Austin Kleon. And what they mean by this is that a bad artist would just take something, not change a single thing and call it their own. A good artist, however, would be able to take something, change things here and there, give it a new context, and therefore create something new or something unique. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, I'm about to do a shoot with this amazing human. Ah, okay, shoot's done. What are we talking about again? Oh uh, yeah, the art of stealing. Okay, in that case, we're gonna need to talk about one of my very own favorite artists. But first, we're gonna need a little mood change. Do you know what makes Quentin Tarantino an amazing filmmaker? Okay, yes, he is a genius of dialogue and a fantastic storyteller, but all of this stems from him being the biggest film buff. He lives and breathes movies. He loves watching them, loves making them. Because we love making movies! In every interview, he's referencing some random niche film that came out in France in 1978 that no one else saw, but is able to describe it with utmost detail and passion. His films are amalgamations of all the films that he loves and loved as a kid. He recreates, he repurposes his favorite shots from other films and filmmakers and changes them to tell his story. There are so many examples of him lifting shot for shot scenes from other films and putting them into his own. But he's retelling it through his lens and his eyes. He's picking this shot from this film, this shot from this film, this story from this film, putting it all together, putting in his genius dialogue, putting in his amazing action. And suddenly you have a brand new story. I saw a, a movie that would have a scene that would be the aesthetic that I was looking for. 
or they would play a song in a movie, and that would be the kind of song that I would use, and it would have the kind of feeling that I'd want a song to have in one of my movies. Uh, or uh, a character would be the kind of character that I wanted to do a movie about. Not all the other characters, just one character. You know, but usually, like I said, it was a scene. It was uh, uh, a mood for only a little bit. The section that they say I took, I did take from it. All right, absolutely I took from it. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's a very different movie. That's very, very different. But the point being, though, is what I had to say and my kind of idea of crime films and my idea of dialogue, you know, there, there was Barry Levinson and Tin Men and there was Goodfellas and there was all kinds, of, there was the David Mamet stuff, all that stuff existed. That, that was sort of like Reservoir Dogs, but it wasn't Reservoir Dogs. It, it didn't have this aesthetic that, I, that I'd been having. Chances are, if you're anything like me, you grew up trying to recreate the things that you used to love and see on TV, films and comic books, paintings, manga, whatever it may be. In the beginning, I straight up just copied or recreated what I saw. I used to draw Goku fighting Batman, which is a bit of a mismatch now that I think about it, but I used to copy the poses directly from the source materials. But then as I grew older, I started coming up with my own poses, my own expressions, my own super attacks. Then I started coming up with my own stories, my own characters, my own worlds. I started to combine inspirations. I liked the way Jim Lee drew characters, but I preferred the way Studio Ghibli did backgrounds. I liked the way Tim Walker told stories through his photography, but I preferred the darkness and the shadows used by Caravaggio. You are essentially taking bits and elements from your favorite artists and favorite art and remixing them to create something new. And yes, there may always be similarities, but it's the differences that make a difference. A chair will be a chair. A shirt will be a shirt, but it's the fabric, the material, the cut, the shape, the construction. That's what differentiates Uniqlo from Yves Saint Laurent. Ikea from Herman Miller. So, to summarize, what have we learned today? How do you develop an artistic style? You take your favorite elements of something, then you add a little personal inspiration. You change the psychology, the context, to really make it feel transformative. To make it feel like you're remixing these elements that aren't actually yours, and then making them into yours. Even though these specific colors weren't yours, or the storyline in the first place, they will be, with a little inspiration, and above all, time. The most important aspect to understand is that your style will take time to develop. It could take years, decades, maybe even a lifetime, who knows. But you do it by creating what you want to see. Make the movies that you want to watch in a cinema. Write the book that you want to read. Take the photos that you want to see in a gallery. And then you do it every single day. Day after day, time after time, and you get better with each time. You'll make a few mistakes along the way, but you'll learn to pick yourself up again. Your style should fundamentally be an extension of yourself. It can grow, it can change, it should grow, it should change. So take your time and trust the process. And that's all I really have to say about that. Anyway, I've got some photos to edit, so I'll see you guys soon. Peace.